Well, welcome back. We're now going to build our maze game. So this is the first lesson in that process. To start with, what we need to do is we need to start a new project. So I've gone into Scratch, and here's the Scratch. Uh, you just Google scratchmit.edu. Uh, once you've got there, then you need to log in, and you actually need to create an account. So I'm going to make the assumption that you've done that part, and then what we're going to do, we're going to go straight into the project. So let's click on new project. So this is our character and by default it's the it's the scratch cat. What we want to do is first of all give it a title. So we're going to call this the amazing race 3. Now before we start what we really need to do is start setting a few things up. So what I'm going to do is going to start off with the backdrops. So we're going to click the backdrops and there's the backdrops here and we're going to import some backdrops. But before we do so we need to find some really nice backdrops uh, that you can use. Now, when you're doing this with the kids, what you may want to do is get them to actually create their own backdrops in an art lesson. So they go and use an A4 piece of paper or an A3 piece of paper and they create their own design and artwork. And then what they can do is take a photograph and then you can import that artwork. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to use something that already exists. So I'm going to go to Google and this is a, a maze that I found. So if I just show you how I did that, what I did was I searched for maze. Now I wanted to find an image that was legal to use. So I clicked on tools, which opens up this next menu here. And then I'm going to choose labeled for non-commercial reuse with modification. So that gives me the right to actually use this and modify it if I need to. So then I searched and then this is the image that I've chosen. Once I've found that image, I need to view that image, which then opens up the image, and then right click and then save image as and then save it somewhere where you can access it easily. So once I've saved this in a location on my hard drive, what I'm then gonna do is I'm gonna just change the, the image a little bit because it's a bit too bold at the moment as a background. So I'm gonna use Google Slides to do this. So I've opened up a Google Slide presentation here. I'm gonna import this image. So I'm gonna click on the image button here, and then I'm just gonna drag that backdrop into my image here. So there's my image, so let's just expand that so it completes the whole screen, like so. And then I'm gonna to go to image options. I'm gonna bring the transparency down. Okay, and then I'm just going to change, let's have some different colors. So I'm gonna change the color to an orange there. All right, so we're gonna have a little orange one, or maybe, maybe orange is a bit too, here we go, let's have a, a, a turquoise one. And then I'm going to go back to file, download as, and then I'm going to save the current slide as a JPEG image. So I'm going to go to save, and there we go, maze backdrops, it's saved it there. Okay, so it's saved it in my downloads folder. So now what I can do, I can go to scratch, and then I can import, and it will be in my downloads, and there it is. I'm going to open that up, and then we have our first backdrop. So then I just need to re rename it. So this is my title screen. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to import another backdrop. So what I want to do is just go back to my maze. I'm going to adjust this again. Let's choose a different color this time. I'm going to go for that color and then we're going to go back to file, download as and JPEG image. And then what I need to do, I need to go over to add a new backdrop. So what I'm going to just do is I can choose from a backdrop from my library. I can uh, upload a file, so I can click on this button here to upload one. If, incidentally, if I want to choose one from the library, there's plenty of backdrops that you can choose from the library in Scratch itself. But I'm just going to go to upload, and then I have a second one here. Let's open the second one, and then bring that second one in. Okay, so there's my second backdrop, and let's do one more. Go to file, and then download as JPEG back to scratch, upload, and there's my third backdrop. So we've got three backdrops here. So we've got our backdrops, now let's just rename our backdrop. So this one is going to be the game over, and this one's going to be time's up. Now the other backdrops we need are the mazes themselves. So let's go to a website. Now I found this website called Maze Generator. You can get it from here, mazegenerator.net. 
And I'm going to first of all create a maze that's 10 by 10. I'm going to use square cells. I'm going to leave everything else as it is and then click generate. So there is my maze. And then what I can do is I can download it. Okay, so I'm going to click on this drop down menu and I want to download it as a PNG. So select the PNG option here and then click download. So that will download your maze and then what we can do we can go back to scratch so what we need to do first we need to create a new backdrop so let's click on the paintbrush here that's going to create a new backdrop now we need to click on convert to vector okay and then we can click import and then choose our maze open and now if we go to our arrow here you can see the maze is slightly too small so what we can do is just expand that to fill the screen and then maybe just move that to the side. So there we have our maze. So that will be our first level and then what we can do is we can add a new one. So I'm going to say 15 this time by 15, generate and then download that as a PNG. Go back to my scratch, new backdrop, convert to vector, import, import the maze, click on the select tool, click on the maze and then just expand that out to fill the screen and then put it where you want it on the screen. So that's how I'm going to do mine. We're going to name these backdrops as well. So this is level one and this one is level two. Okay, so we have our five backdrops. Now I'm only doing two levels at the moment, but you could do more if you wanted to. And um, now what we want to do is actually start looking at the code and go to our title screen. So then we can go to scripts. Now what we need to do is make sure that when this screen is displaying that nothing else is displaying. So we've got our character here. I'm going to delete our character at the moment. So we've got no character, we've just got the backdrops at the moment. So let's go to events. Now when the green flag is clicked, we want it to go to our title screen. So we go to looks. And then we can say switch to backdrop and then let's switch it to the title screen. So when that is pressed, it's going to go straight to there. So let's just try that. So if we go to the times up screen and now if we press our flag, it goes straight to our welcome screen, our title screen. In our backdrop now, what we want to do is add some text. Let's add some text in here. So I'm going to click on our backdrop and let's go to our text tool and type in here. Okay, so I'm just gonna move this around a bit. I'm just gonna click on the select and just make that just slightly bigger. There we go. So, so let's go back to our scripts. Uh, when the flag is pressed, it's going to switch to the title screen. And when the space bar is pressed, we want it to go to level one. Let's click on when the space bar is pressed. We want it to go to looks, switch to level one. So let's play it again. So we we'll click on the flag, press the space bar, and there we go. It's gonna to go to our level one screen. So that completes this lesson at the moment. We've looked at how we can add backdrops to our game. And we've looked at the very basics of starting off with the coding. In the next video, what we're going to look at is how we can start adding characters into this maze and start building the movement of the character.